this is not the first time we are here, right? So we are familiar with um, with Zoom, right? And as always, we go thumbs up if you're okay. Um, and uh, this this talk it will be in English fully. However, we are here if you if anybody needs some assistance in Spanish. Uh, so first of all, Samuel, thank you so much again for for joining us. I'm being here for Happy us to. for donate your time. Um, and please, if you can introduce yourself, that would be very grateful. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, my name's Sam Christensen. Uh, I, uh, I run a Samuel Christensen law firm, which is a, a boutique law firm in the city, uh, or at least it, it is in the city when we're allowed to go in the city. Um, right now it's scattered all across the five boroughs, people working from home. Um, but yeah, we, uh, uh, we primarily deal with the O-1 visa, um, you know, that is commonly the, you know, referred to as the artist visa, although it does, uh, uh, encompass a wide variety of professions. Uh, I know this is a, you know, actor organization talk, but again, if anything, uh, uh, just for everybody's knowledge, you know, it, it does cover a wide variety of professions uh, people who in creative, uh, creative professions, uh, uh, graphic designers, creative directors, we even can get programmers, things like that. So it's a very versatile visa, um, and it's very nice for a lot of different reasons that I can go into later, but that's primarily what we do. So uh, 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 that's where our, our area of expertise, basically. Awesome, awesome, Sam. So um, basically just for, just for, and just maybe to, to be in the same page and maybe clear some kind of, you know, uh, confusions or or misconception about what is the O-1 visa. Could you give, could you give us a briefly uh, explanation about what is an O-1 visa? And uh, maybe if you can jump again, I mean jump already to what is the green card visa and the difference between both of them in terms of artists. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I'd be happy to. Also, are there, are there questions at all that might just be good to get out of the way too about the uh, executive order that was because I know everybody was kind of scared early last week when Trump tweeted that he was going to end immigration or anything like that. But mm -hmm. that's generally, you know, people are worried about that. Uh, uh, it's nothing really to worry about. It's a very limited moratorium on the issuance of green cards uh, from out of the country. So, you know, if you or somebody you know is currently in the middle of the green card process here in the States, nothing to worry about. Uh, we don't know what's going to come up further because this administration is always very um, uh, uh, spontaneous. You don't really see things coming, but at least it, it turned out to be a lot less scary than we all anticipated. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically the uh, our U.S. Uh, immigration system has, you know, two major categories of visas. Uh, uh, one is the non-immigrant visa. The other is the immigrant visa. Uh, 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 the O-1 falls up into the non-immigrant camp. Uh, the green card is the immigrant. And uh, there are, as with all these things, there are many different categories, but the ones that generally artist types uh, uh, look for or end up applying for is called the EB-1. Uh, that is, EB stands for employment-based and one means first category. Uh, the reason why it's the first category and uh, uh, the reason why it's related to the L1 is that there are two, they are our two merit-based um, visa statuses, one being permanent residency application and the other being temporary. Um, they have similar criteria. They have uh, 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 you know, similar, they're asking similar questions. The standards are certainly higher because the what you're getting from each of those applications is so much, uh, um, you know, so so different. You know, a three-year temporary work visa as opposed to permanent residency. So of course, with the permanent residency one, they're going to be more. Uh, uh, they're they're just going to have higher standards because they're only allowed to give so many of those out a year. Um, uh, the reason why artists tend to go for the EB one. Uh, is because it is uh, um, it is the only, with one exception, green card application where you can basically self-sponsor. Most other ones do require a full-time employer and a specific job offer, and that specific job offer has a specific salary requirement, 
and uh, it's a fine way to get a green card, but it just doesn't necessarily conform typically to the artist lifestyle. Uh, uh, not lifestyle, but the artist professional life. So oftentimes they go for the EB-1. Um, going back, kind of, that's sort of the two big distinctions. I'll probably go back right now and talk about the O-1 itself, mm -hmm. if that's mm -hmm. helpful. Um, the O-1 is uh, our, you know, non-immigrant merit-based visa. Uh, it's one of the surprisingly very few options for people. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, people come to immigration attorneys and, and we do help when we can, but they often, t they often tend to think that there's a, a, a wider variety of potential visas and, um, you know, especially um, people who have experience dealing with the immigration systems of other countries. Uh, the U.S. is certainly uh, one of the stricter ones without our being something like North Korea, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the O-1 is one of our more elite uh, 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 visa statuses, too. It is our, yeah, I've said a few times, it's our merit-based one, and for that reason, it's our hope, too, as immigration practitioners, that it's going to be something that, as a increasingly anti-immigrant, well, they've always been anti-immigrant, but an administration that is pushing for more and more restrictions and actually uh, perpetuating their anti-immigrant agenda, uh, they we hope that, and, and there should be some security felt on those visa holders, that that's kind of the type of visa that they're tr trying to push us towards. I feel like it's gonna be the last thing that they touch. So that is something that I think is an advantage to the O-1 that um, other visas might not have. They're not they're not as scrutinized as H-1Bs by people who are uh, uh, critical of immigration. Um, the other advantages that the O-1 has, uh, very basically, it's a three-year visa, um, and 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 it's infinitely approved, uh, uh, infinitely renewable. So what? Uh, you know, the consequence of that is that, you know, you don't have to run into any barriers. Oftentimes, uh, 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 you know, might not be known, but like the H-1B visa, you're only allowed to be here maximally for six years before either a company has to, um, before a company either has to sponsor you for a green card or you end up having to have to go back home for a period of, of, uh, of years. Um, similarly to like the L1 visa, you're only allowed to be here for seven years. Um, yeah, the L1 is a, a uh, um, you know, is just constantly available for you because, you know, I, I know people see green cards as these highly desirable things and there are certainly advantages <laughs> to the green card, but if you don't necessarily see yourself being here for the long haul. You know, if you want to develop your career here, but ultimately don't see this as your home, there might not necessarily be a reason to go for that green card. You know, if it's a thing, even if you're planning on being here for an extended period of time, but if it's not going to be permanent, uh, the green card's a lot of work. It's a lot of, um, uh, uh, like I said, it's a much higher standard. There could just be an advantage to, um, you know, sticking with the L1, but that of course, uh, um, that's determined by your own individual uh, uh, plans. So um, how the O-1 works, it is a visa uh, uh, for people who have already kind of arrived in their career. So, I mean, one thing that is, it's always kind of heartbreaking, but sometimes people do come to us and they're, they're kind of aspirational and they're like, well, I've always wanted to be an actor and what have you done until now? I've worked in finance. Uh, and then we kind of have to, you know, uh, disappoint them a bit because you do have to have some experience in the field that you're, you're hoping to apply for. Um, what the government has done, because they don't want to get into the business of talking about somebody's ability, that's the thing. It, it is a visa for extraordinary ability, but uh, the irony to that is that, that we're really not having a discussion about your ability. You know, mm. um, uh, uh, it, it's very hard as an actor, but even if it's a thing like a graphic designer where you can say, look, this person is technically a very good designer, they don't want to get into that. 
So what they did was they devised a system of uh, uh, categories of evidence that basically we look at as practitioners or you do, you know, whoever is looking at it. And those categories ultimately are uh, the thing that guides the number one, the decision as to whether or not the case qualifies. Mm -hmm. um, and then two, uh, you know, how it is that we're going to pursue the case. Uh, like I said, there are six. Basically how the O1 statute uh, does work is the first thing it says is, uh, you know, you automatically get an O-1 if you've ever received a one-time national or international, uh, national or internationally recognized award. Either you've received the award or you've been nominated for it. And that's generally de defined as a Grammy, Oscar, uh, Emmy, things like that. Hmm. Uh, that, that tends to, that tends to intimidate people though, you know, and, and I realized I was just kind of talking about how you do have to be advanced in your, you have to be in your career in order for you to be able to get this. But I worry that a lot of times clients might read about that or might see that and think, well, I've never been nominated for an Oscar. This is totally outside of my ability. Right. And that's just not true. Yeah, that, that's just not true. Um, the O1 is, um, you know, that that's where those other categories of evidence come in. So basically the statute says that thing, and then it, says if you do not have that you have to satisfy three of the following six categories of evidence and that's where I'm sure probably about 99% of the O1 one applicants end up in that category okay. you know uh, um, so yeah again it's not it's not mostly uh, uh, Tony winners it's not mostly Grammy winners it's, it's people who bypass that first part and go to the other categories Different, um, different, different to different to green card where where the ex exigence are, are very high, are higher, then you you should have the, those kind of uh, awards or something like that in order to move from an O one to green card. Awards are helpful. Awards are their own kind of separate category in the in the green cards. The green card is structured very similarly. Um, the difference being if a nomination does not automatically get you a green card, but if you do get awarded an award of significance, uh, that is an automatic green card. Um, if you uh, uh, have received other awards, similarly, the green card has 10 categories of evidence. Um, so that, that has going for it, uh, that has a, a, a certain advantage going for it in that there are more opportunities. That said, uh, and I can go into the O1 categories and then I can speak about the green card categories. Uh, um, the green card is basically there are technically two O ones since we're talking again as, a, as an artist uh, um, talk. I'm keep limiting it to the O one B, which is the one for creative professionals. But there's an O one A for people in the sciences, academics, uh, 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 things like that. They are um, uh, the E B one. The green card basically kind of jams those two categories, those two sets of categories together, and they lose some. So uh, uh, similarly, if you go and read the green card categories, there are going to be some things that just don't seem to apply to your field at all. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and that goes back to, like I said, I can go to the O1 one categories, but it's important as I'm talking about these that you don't necessarily have to meet all of these categories. It's again, there are six categories of evidence. You have to meet three. Oftentimes, uh, attorney's offices will want to be able to send in a four category case. That's generally our uh, uh, policy at our office, uh, just because, you know, we, we just want that case. We don't want to say yes to a case that we don't think we're going to get. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, I don't like giving bad news. And so, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're conservative in what cases we take. Um, but again, if you hear a category and you just go, well, that doesn't apply to me and that's not going to apply to me for a while, again, they're not, you don't get any, you don't lose ground by not meeting the category. It's about finding the categories that you do qualify for and strengthening them as best you can through, you know, the presentation of your work in your portfolio. Mm. Um, categories very simply. Uh, there are two of them called lead and starring role in distinguished uh, productions. 
lead in critical role in distinguished organizations. Those are two categories that we kind of uh, argue simultaneously. Uh, the reason for that is because there's a lot of overlap. Uh, 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 basically, kind of one way to think about it is, you know, should a person be a, uh, I hate to go back to graphic designer, but or creative director, but say the uh, creative director working at Gray Advertising, and they create a campaign for Coca-Cola, and that then goes on to be, you know, success. Um, <laughs> That person designing that was a, uh, a leader starring participant in the production, the production being the campaign itself. But at the same time, by doing that work and by um, and by by benefiting both Coca-Cola, uh, you know, for giving them a successful campaign and also benefiting their employer, Gray Advertising for being able to say, hey, we've, we've completed the successful work. They've benefited those organizations and they've been leader starring uh, um, participants in that organization. Similarly, uh, for actors, you know, if you are in a company and you put on a production of a, a play that's very successful, um, you are, you know, you are, again, a leading starring participant in that production you know, that individual production, uh, at the same time, you're benefiting the theater company that you, that is putting on the show. Uh, you're potentially benefiting the theater that performs that show. So you're, you're contributing to its reputation as a place that puts on good shows. Um, yeah, like, like we're usually able to, uh, 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 find a way to take a person's whole resume and put it into those two categories. Um, for uh, uh, the other categories, one is called significant recognition uh, by experts in the field, basically shortened it's a lot more words. Um, that is generally, if, if you talk to anybody about the O1, that's letters recommendation. That's usually how that's satisfied. Um, you know, it's a thing where if you work with an attorney, either, you know, the attorney will write them for you or the attorney will um edit them for you different attorneys have different ways of doing it um the important thing is just that those letters do actually address your achievements that's kind of the thing that when i see people either write their own letters or when i just see poorly written letters mm. um it's ge generalized compliments when these letters actually need to address uh um you know, your achievements, because that, that's the heart of the category. It's significant recognition of your achievements. So if your achievements don't make it into the letter, they don't necessarily work for that category. Um, the fourth category is national or international recognition as evidenced by articles, things like that. Um, this again, if you've ever talked to an attorney about no one before, uh, uh, or anybody about no one before, you're going to have heard about this, uh, it's press. Um, Press is basically the meter stick by which we judge cases at our office. Um, you know, it's 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 a thing that it's its own category into itself, but at the same time, it's often strengthening just about every other category we might argue. Because if similar, like if you are a you know an actor, you're in a show, you get a review. The review is very good. Um, that. And if you know the review particularly mentions your performance, that's wonderful because one that fits that category. It's really strong evidence for there. Second, for the previous category, the leader st uh, leader starring and, or leading critical, um, those are you playing a leading starring role or a leading critical role in a production with a distinguished reputation. So we then take that press as well, and it strengthens those two categories too. And and it just it's a thing where if if, uh, if 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 we have enough press, we generally that's that's where we get our confidence. When when somebody comes to us and says, "Can I do this?" If we see the sufficient amount of press, uh, that's when we go, "Yeah." You know, that's when we start feeling very comfortable about the case. Um, we generally say for the O1, it takes about six to eight pieces of press. I sometimes say that too quickly, and people think I said sixty-eight. It is six to eight. 
so uh, uh, I just always like to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm moving slowly. And if I'm talking yeah. too fast with any of this, please let me know. Um, so yeah, that that's its own category, and that really is, you know. Um, and those, let me let me let me make it a little pause here. Those those spreads should be written um, either here in, in the United States or should be written in your country or in other languages. Any, any restriction of that? Okay. Yeah, no, there's no restriction to it. I mean, the only thing is potentially you could find a publication that has such low readership mm -hmm. that that that's the one thing that is potentially not disqualifying, but it is the way that the USDAS distinguishes, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, distinguishes the, the strength of the press. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's not nationality. They don't have a preference for countries. Um, you know, if you're in, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, uh, France's equivalent of the New York Times or whatever, you know, or, or Brazil's equivalent, the New York Times, mm. uh, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter as long as it's kind of well known or has a significant readership. Um, that's what's helpful. I'm not saying you have to be in any of those. Okay. Well, you know, that doesn't, you don't have to be, your press doesn't have to be there, but that's just what, that's the type of thing that they're going to care about. And it is also true if your press is in something that is specific to your field and something that maybe people in your field would read as opposed to the average person, that can be compelling. It can have not anywhere near the readership of major publications, but if it is for actors or if it is for people in, in your industry, we can still use that and can actually be quite strong because again, it's not that it's, it's that it's going to, um, excuse me, uh, people, yeah, again, who practitioners who understand it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, that's always going to be a smaller segment of a population than, than just sort of a general interest publication. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that, that's an important thing to think about. It really, again, unless you find something that truly doesn't have much of a readership at all, none of it hurts, you know, but, but it is, uh, it is, it is stronger if it's, if it's got a higher readership or something like that. Okay. Guys, I wanted to let you know that if you can, you can start right now, start writing your questions in the chat. If you have some of them, I mean, in, in about five, 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 six minutes where it's are, are opening the, the the mics to start doing the q a for now i'm just trying to uh, respond in part of the question that were so uh, that were written in the submission um one of those somewhere it says uh it's it says it come from giselle camacho i don't know if that if she is giselle here let me see her so she's asking about uh, is she okay um she's asking about it uh, I am an asylum seeker. Can I apply for an O-1 visa? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's a fine question. Um, uh, 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 one thing with these questions, I'm very happy to answer them. Uh, my one request, is, and this is kind of, because what I'm sort of doing here is, is at our office, and if anybody wants to stop by, Again, once we're uh, back in swing of things and are allowed to do things like that, it actually might be a while. Um, but, you know, if anybody wants an individual consultation, I'm always happy to answer questions. In these types of settings, if the questions could be kept somewhat general, it would just be appreciated, uh, mostly kind of for confidentiality reasons. Um, you know, but, but if, if there is anything specific, general questions, I'm very happy to. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, but, but, yeah, if there's something where it's like, I'm just about to graduate and kind of getting into specifics. Uh, it, it's best for us to just maybe talk separately. But um, you're an asylum seeker and you are, can you apply for the O-1? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, there might be some tricks involved mm -hmm. in terms of just, you know, maybe it, it's something that can very easily be, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it can easily be, Yes, you can totally do that or no, some other reason why you really can't. Um, it usually does, as I understand it, it does mean, uh, um, it does mean that you're abandoning your asylum petition. You know, mm -hmm. they, they don't generally get to run simultaneously. Uh, if you are, 
you know, if, if you're hoping to still potentially have a successful asylum petition, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you might not want to think about the O1, but um, yeah. Of course. So. Um, there is another question from Jesse Hernandez. She said, she asked, she's asking, how are the new policies, policies affecting applying applicants? How, how are the new what? I'm sorry. How are the new policies affecting applicants? Uh, which new policies, I suppose? Uh, let me see. Let me see. That, yeah, the we, person we is have, able to yeah. clarify. We have Jesse in the room. Maybe, maybe later we can, we can start um, answering that question specifically. I'm going to start uh, opening the mics here in the chat. I have you or who? She's the first that mentioned a question. Who are you there? Do you want to ask your question by yourself? Uh, eh, dale, dale, estoy aquí, esta. Okay. Oh, oh, hold on. We have, yes, we have yes in the room. She's the one who is asking for. Um, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Sorry, guys. I'm kind of new with Zoom, so my husband has to come over and help me. I'm like a grandma. Like, what? Where is it? Where did it go? Um, yeah, I appreciate it. But uh, the question that I had you already answered is what's about the new policies that Trump is talking about that ending immigration and that I wanted to know if we were affected by it. Yeah, it, it's uh, um, basically it, it depends what you're trying to do. Odds are not. Yeah, he tweeted that he's going to end immigration. Then what he ended up doing was, um, uh, what he ended up doing is uh, uh, putting a, basically a hold on green cards that are issued outside of the U.S. Okay. So if you're inside the U.S. and you have a green card application pending, I don't. My understanding is it doesn't affect that. You know, those keep moving. Trump's power when he signs these executive orders is greatest and most defensible when he is making determinations about who can and cannot enter the U.S. Um, okay. This is a little, I, I don't quite, this is a bit constitutional law and a bit policy, uh, so it's a little outside my area of expertise as a practitioner, but that's, you know, he, he doesn't have too much of the ability to, or it would not be terribly easy for him to do stuff that would drastically change the entire immigration system uh, because he gets to kind of have the last say in terms of, uh, uh, you know, that's something specifically given to the executive, uh, uh, you know, his ability to say these people can and can't come in. And he's given a, a great deal of discretion because it's usually about national security. And so he doesn't have to give information generally to justify that because that information's going to be classified or, you know, it's just a thing where the executive is trusted with that. So if you're here uh, and you were looking to submit petitions, that is kind of something we're generally recommending to people um, until this COVID-19 situation resolves or until there's a new administration, um, you know, uh, uh, Staying here and taking care of your applications here while you're here in the U.S. is preferred. Um, just because, you know, I'd hate to do it. I'd hate to say, uh, uh, I mean, that said, in, in when I'm dealing with my clients, um, you know, I always say I don't know your lives. I don't know what's going on in your life in a way that I can make this call for you. You know, uh, uh, you might have some incredibly urgent things to take you out of the country. Uh, and I, I totally respect that, and, and it is your call to make. Uh, the thing I do say is that just things are very wild right now, and like you know, like like we all saw last week on Monday, uh, we don't see this stuff coming. Uh, they're not necessarily the type of administration to signal what they're going to do. You know, we had that tweet at like about 10:30 on Monday, and then we had something signed by I believe Wednesday. So. Um, you know, and especially since, like I just said, his power is greatest when it comes to saying who can and can't come in. That's likely if they are going to try and adjust anything or expand this, that's the way that it's going to be expanded. It's going to be about either not allowing people to have their visas processed outside of the country at embassies, which is already the case right now. They're all pretty much shut down. Um, 
and then also, uh, uh, you know, I don't think they've gone this far, but even then potentially denying it entry to people who already have those visas issued, but then they're trying to do something really bold. And that very easily could be something that's challenging in the courts, but we don't know that. And that could mean there's some time when you're stuck out of the country and can't get in and, and, mm -hmm. and, and there's just all sorts of panic. So generally speaking right now, we are just recommending that people um, handle their petitions inside the country, deal exclusively with USCIS and just kind of stay here um, unless there's a, a truly desperate need to leave. So. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, Okay, now we have in the list, under the same order, we have uh, Hu or Ju. Yeah, Ju. I'm here. Hola, hi. Hu. Um, hi, how are you? Thank you for hi. all the information. It's really nice to hear. Oh, I'm happy, um, happy to. My question is about uh, health insurance because yeah. a lot of my friends, I just got here, I, I got my visa approved and I got here in February, like a week before, in uh, March, a week before everything went down so yeah. um so i still have my traveler's health insurance mm -hmm. and i'm gonna have it till august but then because i'm not working because of all the things that are happening i can't afford like a private health insurance and yeah. a lot of my friends had some sort of help like medicaid or you know like different yeah. kinds of that and then um they their lawyers said to cancel them because they didn't know if that was going to affect uh, any other visa applications because of that, um, because Trump said that anything that would be like a public charge, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm not being clear, but like basically, yeah. is there something that you do for health insurance that's not private? Yeah, I mean, well, well, there are private health insurances, like, you know, there's, there's the healthcare.gov exchange and all that, and, and you might be able to sign up. I mean, the trick of it is you are allowed to get help in terms of subsidized health care, as I understand it. You, I believe, even can be on state Medicaid. The tricky part, and again, if, if everybody's in New York, generally speaking, if you do get some sort of public assistance Medicaid like that, it is generally state-funded Medicaid. You'll want to, when signing up for these programs, be incredibly clear with whoever it is you're working with. Oh, she seems to be frozen. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Okay. Yeah. Are you? Okay. Yeah. She's still there. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to. Um, but yeah, yeah. You'll want to, when talking to anybody that you might sign up with, you're going to want to be very clear what type of program you're, you're, uh, um, you're signing up for and, and who's funding it. So again, if it's state Medicaid, you're generally fine. Those I think in New York are, are kind of the essential plan. Um, uh, 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 it's just when you get into areas where you're actually enrolling in a federal Medicaid program, that's where, that's where you come into an issue with the public charge rule. So, so the, the state would be fine. Yeah. 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 You really, you want to, you want to find out what program you're going into and if it's the thing that gets federal, you know, if it's like a federally funded me Medicaid program, then, then, then you'd want to avoid it. But if it's the thing where, um, you know, you're able to select something like a subsidy where, I mean, that is the thing where if you get a, sub, a subsidized plan, you still might have some monthly payment, but it's generally going to be a pretty low monthly payment. Um, you know, but, but if you are able to get that, that's that much more preferable and it's less problematic for your future. So, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. And generally speaking, if this is relevant, just because I was asked the question, um, uh, uh, when it comes to disclosures of Medicaid, as I understand it, you do not have to disclose anything before the rule went into effect. So if it is a thing where you've been here a while and you're here more to hear about the green card part because you're on your second O one or something like that, uh, you know, it could be a similar situation like when you just moved here, however many years ago you had Medicaid for a year. The good news is, is you just don't, you don't even have to disclose right. that. It's just, it's not, not something they're able to take into consideration so because that's the thing we have people who are panicking and getting in touch with us because they think that um you know they think the fact that they had medicaid four or five years ago also excluded too this is good to know um you know uh uh, uh emergencies generally and, you know including things like pregnancy pregnancies and emergencies if it's kind of a one-time enrollment in medicaid um uh, that's allowed 
you know, or and it's not, it's not that it's allowed because it's not really a function of allowed. It's always a balancing test. So what it is is they're going to take all the things that make them worry and put them on one side, and that would be something like enrollment in a federal Medicaid program, and they're going to look at the things that uh, uh, don't worry them, like you know, potentially healthy salary, maybe the fact that you currently have private health insurance, uh, if you have any savings, things like that, or like a lack of debt, like you may not necessarily have a huge net worth, but you also have almost no debt. So, you know, these these are all the things that they're ultimately going to juggle. But um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, we have next Mariali. Mariali Gomez. Is Mariela here with us? Hi, yes, yeah. I'm here. Hi, hi Mariali. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I have your question here in the chat. Uh, O1, yes. O1 for an actress, but then there's a special H1B1 for Chilean people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that does exist. I mean, there are, there is sort of a tricky part of it. The H1B, I mean, it's, a, it's called the H1B1 and it is, it's for uh, people from Chile or Singapore uh, exclusively. You can basically get an H1B at any time in the year. Uh, the tricky part and the problem with that, or the reason why it might not be helpful for actors, is that generally we ha it works like any other H1B, where you have to have a company that sponsors you, that company is agreeing to take you on as an employee, and you're pretty much only allowed to work for that company. So if you're looking to be able to take on roles in other productions or, you know, uh, uh, um, it's acting, so it's not freelance, but have that kind of freedom where you're able to, uh, um, you know, take advantage of the many opportunities here. It, it's probably not uh, uh, that helpful of a visa because you are, you're, yeah, you're, you're um, restricted quite a bit. Yeah. As, an, as a producer, maybe can use that H1. Yeah, if, if it's a thing, if it's a situation where you're going to have, like, again, it's not necessarily bad, but it just, it doesn't necessarily fit into a lot of people's lives. Now, again, yeah, if somebody's a, a producer or an artistic director, you know, for a particular company, and that's where they're going to be spending all of their energies and time, then it works great. It's, 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 it's perfectly fine. Um, it's, it's just, again, situations where actresses or musicians or things like that, where they're just not necessarily, it's not a full-time employment world, generally speaking. But again, if you're an actor and there is a, a show that, you know, you get cast in some off-Broadway show or Broadway show or something, I just say off-Broadway because once you're on Broadway, it generally involves equity and that's its own completely crazy thing. And I have no idea if that could be done, uh, to be honest. But, um, you know, you get into cast in a production and it's, it's a long running one and you've got a fairly extended run in it, uh, uh, that could be an H1B1, you know, because you just know you're going to be doing kind of the same thing. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I prefer to have the visa all one as an actress. That is my goal. Um, but I, I stopped act for five years. So I need to have new production on my resume. I'm mm -hmm. working on, in that now and in the interviews. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I have all the, the other documents, but I need new jobs here in Mexico. Yeah. I'm in Mexico now. That is, that, is, that is a good question. I'm going to take that, Maria Lee, because how, how, how um, new should be the production that you are, you are using for your apply, for your application? Should be recent jobs or, I mean, for her, for example, if, she's, if she was uh, doing very well jobs five years ago and she stopped doing it, can she still apply with those jobs that she had in the past? It, it really depends. Okay. Um, it really depends. Uh, uh, that's a very hard, it's a very good question, but it's a very hard one to give a general answer to. Okay. Um, it would probably depend on a lot of factors, uh, how much work they had previously, why the absence, you know, I mean, that, that's kind mm -hmm. of, you know, that, that, that would be obviously a big part and that's a very case specific question, like why were you not working for that long? 
uh, not not yeah. working, but why were you not working in your field that long? So yeah. again, that that's probably, um, that, you know, how that would work for you specifically, that's probably a really good question to either, you know, talk to a lawyer individually and actually have that, um, you know, have that discussion. Uh, in, you this, know, in these five years, I worked as a producer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know yeah. if this, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think we're kind of verging a little into kind of individual case questions. So mm -hmm. if you'd want to set up a time okay. to talk, okay, I'd be right. happy to. But okay. then we can also have pause also pause time for the people who okay. have pause just the... Uh, so I have a question from Carla. You. Carla Costa... Costa Vil? Costa Hi, Sam. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, wondering about the waiting period to get a response from an 01 or 01 renewal. That is also a very tricky question to answer. I mean, the good news is we've actually been seeing fairly quick responses. Um, I think this whole situation might actually be causing a reduction in filings. And so if they have a reduction in filings, that means they can get through stuff that much faster. Um, uh, and, and fortunately also too, we're not seeing any sort of weird pushback. Uh, it's not a okay. thing where we're getting a bunch of weird RFEs asking for things that don't make sense like like they're still just kind of operating business as usual they're also as of now uh not asking questions about people's current employment which is very nice it's yeah kind of I mean, yeah you know i mean because it's kind of it's kind of obvious and it's and it's uh i mean i think we'd be able to make the argument but if they wanted to be jerks about that they could but it's just yeah. not something we're seeing i mean you know, one of my job offers starts in july like for instance my visa expires in july so we don't know yet if Everything is yeah. going to be open by July. No, no one really knows. That's, that's yeah, exactly. Apt, so yeah, well, that's yeah, good exactly. to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So okay, Ursula, unmute yourself, please. Um, your your Ursula, we can hear you. Oh, yeah. Sorry, None it's on the chat. I wrote it on the chat. Uh, let yeah. me let me read it again. So I wanted to know about applying like for aid. For example, my EB1 uh, case is still processing right now. Uh, I'm on a no one. So my lawyer advice uh, not to apply to unemployment because that might potentially be used against me for my EB1 case. So what about grant application like for artists? Is that, does that? Oh yeah, no grant application wouldn't have any problem. Even again, I mean, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't advise going against your lawyer's advice per se, but uh, from our research, unemployment benefits aren't anything that factor into a, a, a public charge thing because unemployment isn't necessarily a public benefit. You know, uh, unemployment is generally a state mandated insurance scheme uh, where, you know, if you're hired by somebody, they are, you know, uh, uh, we have employees in my office and every time I run payroll, I pay into the unemployment insurance fund. And so then now, I mean, that it's crazy right now because the system is being overwhelmed. So they are getting their own funding, but you know, it's, it's not the type of program that they're worried about with public charge where, you know, uh, uh, where you're actually just taking public benefits that, you know, our, 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 you know, these sort of programs put in place like federal Medicaid, like food stamps, things like that, you know, that are just, just pure welfare programs. Okay. So, yeah. But I, but it definitely, uh, again, not to, uh, uh, you know, you can make your own decision about the employment thing, but, but I, I can't see a grant, you know, a grant is, as I understand it, I mean, it's, it's, there's a program that's offering money to a class of people if they can make a strong enough case that you're not you're not a strain on a public system at all. That's usually a uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 meritorious. Again, you're you're applying for this grant usually and saying I'm really good at something or I want to develop this thing. Uh, give me money because it's gonna we're, we're all gonna get a benefit out of it. So, yeah, that's I I wouldn't worry about grants personally. Thank you. Yeah. We have her in the room. I'm so sorry I was gone. My internet broke down, no. but thank you for giving no me a chance and thank you for doing this. No oh, yeah, of course. 
Um, yeah, I see these questions. These these are kind of varying a little close to kind of like, hey, what's going on with my case? But uh, I, I think I can give pretty short answers to them. Uh, it, unfortunately, there's no there's no making up for lost time. You know, there's no. I had a visa for. Uh, uh, you know, I wasn't able to work for three months, so just give me three extra months. That's unfortunately just not how the system works. Okay. Um, generally speaking, too, unless it's it's poorly done. Uh, the good news is, is that, uh, 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 you know, and this is a general question, um, uh, uh, as long as you keep working in your field and you sort of maintain at least your level of activity, or if not, maybe more, uh, you are, you, you're generally able to get renewals of your O-1. Um, it's, it's bad when people come to us and want to renew their visa, and we got, originally got them, them a visa, as a pastry chef, but uh, two years ago, they found out that they truly want to be a DJ and they've been DJing for the last two years. That's where we go, uh-oh, uh you know, usually whenever people come to us and they go, oh, I don't have as much press the first time or this or that, it's not something that worries us. We can usually make it work. And can I use the same press and the same stuff that I used for Yeah, those? you're always going to use, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know who did your petition before, but um, uh, uh, um, generally with renewals, they, 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 uh, um, uh, offices will reuse all the old materials and then they supplement with the new materials because you are trying to give them a complete picture. It's mm -hmm. not a thing where you're trying to go, here's all, you'd only be hamstringing yourself if it's like, here's the things I did in the last two years and then leave out other evidence of your success. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Igor Correa. Hi, thank you all for Hi. doing this. Hi. Oh, yeah, happy to. Yeah, um, um, I had a question, but I, I, since you mentioned something, I was wondering if I could change it related to yeah, what sure. you said. Um, how long would it take an artist who is in an O1 and that you initially like um, submitted him and you applied as a musician or as whatever, uh, for that artist to develop into another part of the career like for example if a musician becomes an actor while they're in the states um how many o1s do you think it would take for you to be able as a lawyer to submit that actor that musician as an actor as well yeah i mean this this is that's incredibly case specific um okay. you know, if that if that oh no 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 but i, I can still i can still explain it but it is it's 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 uh uh, it's it's harder. It's less a function of how many O1s have they've had, and just how much. It's more again all the stuff. How much success that person seen in that field. Um, oftentimes too, and it is if if you're if you're looking to go for an O1, uh, uh, one of the nice things about the O1 is it's pretty elastic in terms of uh, uh, um, your ability to make it. Uh, 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 cover a lot of different uh, abilities or, or activities. Um, you know, rather than call you a musician, if you have any sort of experience with performance outside of that, so if you've ever acted at all, uh, you could be called a performer. And by calling you a performer, your case primarily will be based off of your musical history. But by including the acting, we kind of say, hey, you know, this, this person's the full package. Um, and, and music, the interplay between music and theater is, uh, well known. You know, I mean, there's oftentimes there's songs and, you know, people have to sing, perform musically for productions or things like that. Um, it's not a hard case to make. If you do, if you are a multi-talented person and if those talents do all exist in kind of the same umbrella, it can usually, we can usually make it work somehow. You know, it's only tricky for us when, when they're doing something that's so disparate. You know, again, like if somebody's a chef and a DJ and a musician, we're not going to be able to push all those together. We could still get that visa for that person, but they would just have to qualify for each one of those things. Gotcha. So, so um, and, and with qualifying for a visa, uh, um, again, it, it could be disparate. You do have to clearly qualify. They're not going to go, okay, you got these two. This one's a little iffy, but you mostly got it right go for it it's going to be a thing where where you have to um uh, uh what is it 
you know, they are going to look at each one individually, but much, much less so with the thing where it's like a musician and an actor, and we just call your performer, that they don't really scrutinize that or split that up much. So. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sure. Appreciate it. I guess the, the question of Mateo is, is basically said already. Someone, what do you think about? He's asking if, if the fact that you are being employed for this time of uh, coronavirus is going to be affected negatively. Yeah. The yeah, I, I did kind of speak to it. I can kind of just yeah. say a few more things. I mean, one thing is that this whole situation is completely new. And mm -hmm. so that said, I don't necessarily think that the uh, they're being unemployed is going to be a problem. There is the issue of maintaining your status. That's kind of the thing, which for us and how we understand it and what we're telling clients is, you know, if you have an agent sponsor, um, you have to just maintain that relationship. And and I think it does help that we no one can literally work. And you are here, you're available for work. Uh, uh, all of the conditions of your visa case that were sent in that likely said that you are, you have project lined up and if any other projects come up, your sponsors are going to act as an agent for the purposes of that. Um, that's how we're saying that the people with agent visas can sort of sit tight and not worry too much about uh, uh, their maintenance of status. That said, I mean, I don't think that question has an answer. You know, there's nothing in the regulations or the statutes or anything that specifically says that, but I would be, I would be generally surprised if okay. they, uh, if they started. I mean, well, the way we find out is if, you know, we started getting RFEs for renewals or extensions of stay where they have to show, where they start asking us, you know, how is this person, what projects are they currently working on, how, how they maintain their status right now, you know, that sort of thing. So, so I, I think it's going to be a thing that they're going to uh, 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 turn a little bit of a blind eye to, specifically the unemployed part, just because it doesn't really benefit anybody to, to go after it in a, in a national emergency. So. Good. We have a last question here, no chat from Cindy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of going the opposite way. <laughs> uh, it's the process, is it similar? Like if I want to go work in Spain or in Mexico, or would I have to talk to somebody like a lawyer in those countries? Yeah. Um, yeah, you probably, admittedly, I don't know. Again, like I said, some countries, uh, I mean, our immigration system compared to other countries' immigration system is ma you know, massively strict. Um, Spain or Mexico, I don't know. You know, I mean, kind of my expertise and my education is, is people coming here. Uh, you very well likely want to talk to an attorney. Um, it might be a much simpler process, though. It might be, you know, uh, um, yeah, it might just be a thing where, where you, you can go uh, uh, and it maybe could depend on your citizenship, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a, all, all that basically. So, yeah, I would recommend finding somebody who does deal with uh, 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 specifically visas going to that country. So, you know, maybe talk to a Mexican immigration attorney or a, uh, a, 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 a yeah, like a Spanish one, so. Thank you. Great. So what about what about the the because I I know that when you get the O one visa you are allowed to I mean of course you have an um, an sponsor but um, are you strictly allowed to work with that um, sponsor or are you able to 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 work in other kind of productions I'm asking that because I know that some productions. Um, and maybe I, I, I'm speaking about for myself. When you go, for example, to go on camera work, they sometimes they just they tell you, no, I'm sorry, but you can't work here because you get an O1 visa. You have to have at least a green card in order to be allowed to work with any company as a as a performer. So, yeah. but it, it's me. But at the same time, I've I've heard other 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 opinions. Yeah. So what, what is your what is your your opinion about? I mean, this well, this this is, highlights uh, uh, strongly the, the, the difference between what's legally allowed mm -hmm. and what individual companies or production houses or things like that what their internal policies are. So, um, you know, you are allowed to do that work. Um, you know, there could be considerations like, say, you are going to be going for a video, film, television project. Uh, something they might prefer is for you to have 
uh, 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 you know, as part of the L ones, you have to have letters from unions, and uh, it could be a thing if you're going to do film and television, they might want to get a letter from the Screen Actors Guild. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, productions, especially in film and television, can be quite conservative, meaning they will, uh, um, you know, they might also not necessarily just want that SAG letter; they might want to actually be on your itinerary. Uh, as part of whenever you have an agent visa, you have an itinerary that says what your projects are. So they might want that extra level of decisive authorization from the government. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then you, everybody here probably also knows, you know, these film and television productions, they they move fast. You know, they're not, it's not this slow, like, okay, let's make sure we get everything done. So I, I oftentimes can be the case that you run up against productions and uh, they'll frame it as you can't do this. And when it really is, we won't do this. You know, we just, cause again, there's no, there's no protections against somebody saying they don't want to work with somebody because of their immigration status. You know, like, like they, they get to just have that be their reason, say it's too complicated. They don't want to deal with it. Uh, it's rare. It's more common in film and television, like you said, um, it's also somewhat common in uh, uh, academia, so for ac certain academic jobs, uh, um, teaching jobs, they sometimes can go, oh, it seems great, and then they go, oh, you're working with an O1, oh, never mind, you know, so that that's what it is. You are legally allowed to take on these productions, like that's in the law, but oftentimes what people butt into is, is, is uh, company policy. Um, maybe maybe I'm I'm asking something that might be very very ambitious on Titanic, no? But the fact that Ola Ola part of part of the part of the of the objective of Ola is fighting for the rights of Latinos and, mm -hmm. and actors in general, um, in the in the entertainment field. Yeah. Do you think that would either through Ola or either through other organization or 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 something that we can organize? Can we start? Clarifying those those scenarios that we are that we can say, may, may, I'm 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 saying because maybe it's because of the mis mis knowledge or mis knowledge the word mis knowledge or uh, uh, misunderstanding or? misunderstanding. I'm, thank you for correcting. Yeah, it's it's because of the misunderstanding of from the productions that all one visa are, are allowed to to work with any production. Can all that or or I'm saying all that. But maybe do yeah, something yeah. that we can like put this as a fact, as a manifesto, guys, we're allowed to work with any production. Yeah. I mean again, I, I really I highly doubt the issue is their misunderstanding. You know, um uh if they have a company policy or if they have a production policy or something like that. And you know what it can also depend on the individual actor and the role. If they find somebody that they really, really care about, they might go through all that issue of getting the SAG letter. So you're not even necessarily work going up against a monolith of either ignorance or concrete company policy, mm -hmm. but it is just going to be a thing where certain uh, publication, not publication, uh, certain production companies or, or theatrical companies or things like that, um, you know, they just have their rule and, it, and it's not based on not, you know, they're not thinking that they can do it or can't do it. Um, it's oftentimes the thing where they, they either don't want to deal with the effort or they do find the agent relationship to be, it's not a liability, but it's also certainly more complicated than just hiring a U.S. citizen. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I can see them still wanting to, you know, just sort of go with the area that presents no liability. You know, so I think it's, you know, if it is ever a thing where a company seems actually confused on that, I, I don't, uh, uh, I mean, it's sure, I think it's a good idea to self-advocate and say, actually, you know, um, you know, if it's a thing where it's not, where you're worried about it or you don't want to have to go through the process, I understand that, but I do believe it's legally allowed and, you know, maybe have them get in touch with an attorney or something like that. And then maybe a good, good outcome could come from it. So, awesome. Awesome. yeah. Sam, please share with us your contact information. Your your okay. your where where can people can reach out or 
I don't, I know that personally for me legal field is a very <laughs> is a whole dimension yeah. of knowledge that I'm not yeah. <laughs> um, I'm surely all, all of us as an artist maybe are not that familiar with those terms is there any, is any information that is publicly uh, in the internet that we can okay I I, I have doubt about the, the name of if it's H1 or H2 or D3 is there any yeah. website or something where you can help I mean offer us I mean, it, it, sorry what I, what I would recommend, it's, it's, uh, it's actually, it's not a bad website, and it's probably the best website for you to go to to avoid misinformation, but the USCIS's website themselves is actually not bad. Mm -hmm. That's just USCIS.gov. Um, you, you know, they're not going to go too out of their way to explain to you how to apply mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, the sort of sophistication that an attorney might bring to the petition. Mm -hmm. But what you can be sure of is that whatever you read there, um, it's, it's actual confirmed U.S. governmental policy. You know, if you go to any other site or any message board, you're hearing from uh, um, all sorts of people. And, you know, I've, I've, I go online, I, I read the message boards, I do things like that uh, just to see if I can get a sense of things or read other people's experience. Um, and it's very wild. Sometimes you actually see people on message boards who are uh, allegedly not attorneys, very sophisticated, know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Other times you find ones and it's just this person's giving out legal advice to somebody and they clearly just don't really know too much of what they're talking about. Um, so, um, you know, I'm able to distinguish that because I'm a practitioner. I, I would be cautious of anybody going too deep into the message boards and to just see if maybe the USCIS website itself could uh, uh, help them out. So. Awesome, awesome. Um, Sam, I'm, 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 it's, my, it's my fault. I just skipped one question for Victoria. Victoria, do you want to ask your question? I just skipped from the from from chat. Oh, yeah, Sorry. we could call this the last question. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'm applying from the, I mean, I'm, I'm preparing my, my paperwork for the green card application. But my visa yeah. expires in a year, so my lawyer told me I may, because it's a lot of work, a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. So <laughs> my lawyer told me I may have to renew my visa, so I yeah. can stay in the States uh, with the working permit. Uh, otherwise, but is there a way that I, I don't have to, because I don't know when my paperwork works are going to be ready, for at least six yeah. months, something like that. I don't know. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's that's you know, especially if you already have an attorney, that's that's a good thing to bring up specifically with him because he'd know your case and know if maybe there's some reason why that's not advisable. Um, this is kind of veering into the this is a question about my case thing that um, I can't really do in these types of forms. But just speaking very generally, uh, yeah, if you currently have an O1 and you've maintained your status, uh, you should be able to file for an extension and not have to leave the country. Just be able to stay here. The extension means that I have to do the all the paperwork for the visa again, or just can't file an extension. Like I need a year for something. I mean, you you, you generally have to submit a petition. You know, you have to submit. You know, you still have to make the case for oh. the, the categories. Yeah, there's no there's no thing where you just submit something and say, hey, I'm staying another year. Uh, let me have another year. You still do have to kind of, yeah, yeah, you do have to file a case generally. Okay. So. Awesome, guys. I'm sharing. I'm sharing here the chat, the website of Samuel, just in case you want to reach them. You can find them. They're all the information. There's also my. Uh, that's also my uh, uh, email address. I just put okay. that down there okay. too. So awesome. Um, personally, I will. I, Sam, Samuel is 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 the lawyer that where I got I got my visa and met, um, welcome to work with working with him. So I recommend him as a very very serious. Uh, lawyer and hopefully guys you can find more answer for your question with him yeah I'd be happy to set up a time so uh, thank you everybody for having me this is very nice uh, 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 yeah thanks for sharing your questions and, and I hope I was able to be helpful sure sure so. thank you guys for being here with us today to, uh, recording on Wednesday and Wednesday we will have a talk about nutrition and well how we, we should have this um, new, I mean, how we can uh, improve our behaviors of eating these days during COVID-19. COVID
Thank you guys for being here. See you next Thank time. You Thank you, everybody. Remember, Ola is back. So please become a member. Tell your people that become a member because that will really help us to do more of this. Oh, guys, and please, please help us. Help us a lot. If you can follow us, follow us in our uh, Instagram. It's at Ola Official. At Ola Official. I'm going to go in here. If you can follow us, <laughs> that would be very... Uh, grateful and if you can spread the word about what we are doing here that is really helpful to a show. You got it. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you Sam again for being here. Have a good night. Ciao.